Thanks to you that have joined a few uh, minutes early here. We're going to get started probably about four or five minutes or so, allow folks to join. This is going to be recorded and made available for viewing later if you know someone that wasn't able to attend today. But much of the information is contained in the very lengthy RFP information that was put out as well. Yeah, it's it's signed in right now. Hi there. Hey Liz. Um, we're gonna get started in just a few minutes here. Allow some folks to join. And then I will be sharing my screen and then Dan, if you're going to be able to stay on this whole time, which I think you are, I'm going to make you a co-host and I'm going to ask you to catch unmuted people if you don't mind uh, as they roll in. Thanks, John. Right? Yeah, sometimes we be in denial by shit. Are we still waiting on people to join? Yes, we are. We'll be starting in just a few minutes. Okay, it is, what is it, 3.03 after. We've got, let's see here, we've got 56 participants online. I see Liz from East LA Regional Center is on. And I think 
Mary Lou is assisting, right? From East LA on this one too. Hey, Mary yeah. Lou, good to see you. Um, and then I don't know if Enrique is going to join us. From... I don't believe so. All right. Um, and you guys can see my PowerPoint okay? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Hi there. Uh, my name is John Decker. I'm the Director of Community Services at Alta California Regional Center. I'd like to welcome you to the statewide regional center request for proposal for financial management services. Uh, this is being put on jointly by all 21 regional centers, um, but primarily the regional centers that are going to be the leads on this are East LA Regional Center. And so I will just throw it over to Liz uh, right now to say hi to everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Harrell and I am the manager of our community services department at the Eastern Los Angeles Regional Center. Thanks for your interest in this project. And additionally, um, uh, Kern Regional Center is also our partner on this um, as well. We are, um, we have uh, three different regions, uh, Central, Northern and Southern um, that we are doing for this RFP. So we're gonna go over a little bit of that with you. Um, I know other regional centers have got some folks on. So I see Mia just popped on from San Andreas Regional Center. So hopefully some of you are from uh, the greater San Jose area and are interested in this as well, because uh, certainly a needed service in that area too. We're going to spend a little bit of time here going over the need um, for the RFP. And then we're going to get into some of the specific language and we're going to do our very best to answer questions related to this. Um, and again, hopefully everyone can see my screen okay that I am sharing. So uh, this information is already contained within the uh, document that you received, which led you to this meeting today. Um, I know across the regional centers, this was posted on people's social media accounts. I found it on the front page of East LA Regional Center's um, website. They have it right there very prominently. And so um, with that, the idea here is for the 21 regional centers to come together to address our shared need for financial management uh, services and with that we have um three different uh, a south a central and a northern region the way we are going to be doing this process this request for a proposal is there's going to be the three lead regional centers that in essence are going to be getting into the startup contract they will be the ones that are administering any startup funds that you would receive for this. And then whichever of the local regional centers are the ones that will be the ones that actually vendor you. So if you're already a regional center service provider, you're kind of familiar with this, that you get vendored by the regional center that is your local regional center. Um, so in this case, and I will give a good example, um, if you are in um, uh, Oakland, for example, and uh, you are a regional center of the East Bay, um, you know, service provider in that area, but you get uh, picked for this RFP, then we would uh, have uh, Alta California Regional Center, because you're in Alta California Regional Center's area, be the one that does the startup contract for you. And then when you get vendored with the regional center, you would get vendored with, for example, regional center of the East Bay, and then the other regional centers like Alta and all throughout the state of California, possibly, but definitely the northern region ones would um, become user regional centers, meaning we can use a regional center of the East Bay's vendorization, let's say if you are from Oakland. Now, if you're from Sacramento and you are um, interested in this, then it may be that, you know, Alta is the one that does both the startup contract and the vendorization. So Liz and her team are going to be the ones that are responsible for the South region. Um, Enrique's team um, from the Central, from Kern Regional Center, are the ones that are going to be responsible for the Central region. And you can see the breakdowns of the different regional centers there. Um, and we can certainly provide you with uh, a little bit more information if you're not exactly sure where your geographic location falls for all of these different ones. Um, for the timelines, and again, this information is included in the RFP, we recognize this is very short notice. Um, we are uh, made a request to the state of California to be able to reuse or to use funding um, that otherwise um, was purchase service dollars. And we were able to make an application to the state um, uh, as a uh, 
an entity, all the 21 regional centers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, East LA Regional Center was the one that um, put the initial request in, and then we we're able to um, have these RFPs that we are going to be able to do. But with that, the challenge is then that we need to get into contract by the end of this fiscal year, which we're two months out from right now. Um, those of us that have worked in the world of doing annual contracts uh, through our community placement plan and community resource development plan are used to rushing to get into contract before the end of June. Um, but we wanted to share with folks kind of what that process is going to look like and who you'd be working with. Um, so again, you can see here, uh, we're doing this bidders conference. It's going to, it's put on via Zoom to give you just an opportunity to even ask, ask some questions as well. And then um, you can see who they go to, the proposals. And you can see the timeframes here. There will be the selection committee that's going to be taking a look at the proposals. We're going to have an opportunity. The uh, community services directors from all the regional centers are getting together in the month of May. So we'll have an opportunity to review proposals as well. We're going to be looking at awarding the proposals by June 3rd. And therefore, then having um, the hope that we can be fully into contract by June 30th. We have some, we think pretty standardized startup contract language that we will be looking at using. Um, so we wanna, we'll, we'll make sure that we share that with folks um, if they are interested in submitting an application. We have a few different reasons why this is so needed for us. And so I just wanna touch on that really quickly. Um, and I know we've got a number of folks from different regional centers that are here as well. And so especially, you know, Liz, for example, if you have anything as it relates to like SDP that you wanna share some of your challenges at your regional center. But for us, I, I will start off with just I included a slide here about employment. Our financial management services provide wage pass through services for the paid internship programs. We don't currently have enough uh, FMS agencies to provide that service. We have to end up doing a courtesy vendorization with other FMSs outside of our area. Um, it Right now we are having um, a challenge uh, because of the lack of opportunities to get people to be able to start with their internships. And we're also concerned about businesses withdrawing their partnerships because of challenges um, with payment as well. So. For the employment side of things, um, you know, certainly a, a need for our regional centers. Um, Liz, uh, SDP. I, we, I, you know what, what, if I could just say on employment, it's, it's precisely the same um, here in the LA area. So thank you, John. Yeah. So for, for self-determination, I think you've captured it here. Obviously for folks to be able to participate in self-determination, they do have to use an FMS. It's the one required vendor provider. Um, but um, what we have is we have a lot of FMS um, need across the state. We have FMS agencies, but we need more and we need more capacity with the ones that do exist. Um, what's happening is it is affecting the ability for folks to move forward in self-determination. Um, we are, uh, we are again, having issues around, as I say, lack of supports because there isn't that capacity. So we're hoping that by bringing on more agencies, by building capacity in our existing agencies, that folks will be able to move through the self-determination uh, process quicker. And I know we're going to talk in the RFP in a few minutes go through it, but I want to emphasize too that what we're talking about here when we're talking about either development of new or enhancement, what we're really talking about here is hoping to hear uh, ways that folks can use technology, uh, bring on more staff, um, et cetera, to be able to really have whether they're doing employment, SDP, we're going to talk about participant directed, really have people be able to have a streamlined experience in real time in dealing with you as FMS. Um, but particularly that's a need in self-determination. Thanks, John. Sorry. And additionally, um, FMS and social recreation. So with, uh, as well, the opportunities that have arisen, us being able to have our, our restored services and one of them being social recreation. Uh, again, I think the common theme here is that so many of these new and exciting things that we want to be able to offer to clients require us to have FMSs in order to be able to do it. In so many different ways, we're trying to tailor and individualize services that really require the supports of FMSs in order to make that happen. Um, and in the case of social recreation, being able to um, cover the, the costs to be able to initiate some of the social recreation services um, as well. Again, um, having a either delays or having um, 
few providers that can do this um, limits our, our clients' opportunities. And so, um, again, just even deeper into where our needs lie um, as to this as well. And uh, not wildly different than the participant directed services. Again, I think what you will see is that there's a lot of creativity that the state is trying to put towards service delivery for people with developmental disabilities in 2024. However, in order to be able to utilize that and to do that, we need the FMSs to be able to provide those supports. And so I know during the course of this, um, I think it would, I mean, I, what we will show shortly is the template of our RFP, which I think we stole very liberally from uh, San Andreas Regional Center. It may actually say their name on it somewhere still. But, um, but with that, I mean, that is... Um, the challenge is individuals with, as we know, um, larger budgets, for example, that they are trying to have implemented through the self-determination program, and that's just not having the FMS supports to be able to do it. And what Liz talked a little bit about earlier, which I really appreciate, is, in essence, ways in which we can talk about specializing the proposal that you're all going to do that shows how you would use this money to provide those better services and supports and faster implementation of those for um, the six regional centers that would be covered by the pilot. And so I think I stopped sharing my screen now and I am going to jump over to the actual language that is in um, the regional center uh, statewide FMS. So if you can just give me just a moment here, I will. And I think, again, I would normally uh, navigate there from East LA Regional Center's uh, website because it's right on their front page, but everyone knows where we've got that stuff. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And again, um, really a, a shout out to um, San Andreas Regional Center that had put out a RFP, um, as did Alta for an FMS, and um, they were willing to share some of their template. And I know uh, a number of the community services directors throughout uh, the state of California helped us out as we were looking at getting this planned. So the announcement is out. This document is um, in um, attached to all of the um, announcements that occurred as well. But what we'd like to do is just go over some of the aspects of the information that's uh, included in here. And then I'm going to ask my dear colleagues who know a lot more about this than I do to help me out with answering your guys' questions about uh, the FMSs and the proposal. So I just mentioned right now that um, this is a statewide FMS um, and we are looking at three separate regional centers being the leads on this. And we are looking at, you know, possibly doing 2 million, 2 million and 2 million for these three different projects. One of the things that we are looking at doing is just really standardizing the process itself statewide, which is kind of new for us because we've never tried to do that, I think, with all the regional centers. Um, but with that, We've identified the points of contact from the three different uh, leads uh, for folks that are interested in submitting a proposal. Um, and again, you have the, the deadlines that are put in there. Um, and then um, as many of you are aware, just because we do an RFP um, and even if you are an awarded an RFP, in order to become a service provider of the regional center, you have to meet the qualifications for vendorization and then ongoing utilization uh, by the regional center is not necessarily guaranteed. You can become a vendor of the regional center, but um, the utilization of your services um, depends on a number of factors. And so I will say though, it is absolutely in our regional centers, all of our 21 regional centers best interest to get absolutely as much utilization as possible out of FMS providers. So, um, uh, I'm going to keep kind of scrolling through here um, as it relates to the final amount of the award, whether or not it is for sure going to be a $2 million amount or whether or not, for example, you submit a proposal that says we, you know, we're not looking for the lowest bidder per se as it relates to the proposal, but um, the best utilization of the funds to be able to best meet the needs of the, the local regional centers that are part of the, the conglomerate. Um, so, let me again go down to the next page here, which we already shared the information about the um, how to obviously attend the bidders conference. You're here now, 69 folks now. We got a little bit more that have joined us. And you can see the time frames that we have in here. Again, um, we are going to be looking at the applicant interviews uh, May 30th and 31st. So that's a big thing if you are <laughs> trying. We, we have a very 
compressed time frame in order for us to be able to have opportunities to talk with folks about this and to get us uh, negotiating and finalizing contract language in the beginning of June of 2024. And so with that, um, that's why we have you know these time frames. So if you are interested in doing this, um, if you're planning a vacation on May 30th and 31st, I would recommend finding someone that could be available for an interview if you do get chosen um, for that time frame. That's really the only challenging time frame that exists here. We are going to be working really closely with folks between June in the month of June to get the contracts approved. Um, and then obviously to get our boards to approve the contracts as well, because the contracts require board approval for our boards because they are going to be larger than $250,000. Liz, John, I, I'll stop my, I want to stop myself. Oh, sorry. Perfect timing. I want to stop and see if you had anything to add there. And I want to interrupt you. So look at Perfect. that. <laughs> We work so well together. Yeah, no, I know. I saw a question pop up in the chat around: um, Is it is it for uh, two million dollars, or is one vendor each region? You know, I have to say, speaking for the southern region, it may not be. It may be more. We may look at: Hey, this one's just going to be LA County, but there's another that's more just all of Southern California. We are very adaptable and flexible. Uh, we're really going to look at what people submit to you make look those amazing, kinds. Melissa. Uh, Congratulations again. Uh, we're going to really take into account what's what's proposed uh, to help us guide our decision making on that. So there is that ability to have more. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. And then I'm going to keep scrolling through. Um, and this is a, a little bit of a rehash of kind of what we talked about previously, right, which is what we are interested in, why we are interested in this, which is to support self-determination program, to support employment, to support participant directed services um in here sorry is there anything liz anything i want to well I just, about thanks john i just want to emphasize if you can go back up a yeah. little bit here at the very top here um because this is what was approved by the state it is what we, we really do want to see um FMS services that are accessible, responsive, transparent through the use of both technology and culturally competent human resources. I know it's the second time I said that, so you can hear how important that is, right? Um, and the concept here of what are you going to, what, what can you set up? We have issues where people maybe are dealing with an FMS, they turn in their documentation to a mailbox and that person doesn't work there anymore. You know, what are you going to put in place to prevent that from happening? How could people maybe be able to go in and see in real time whether or not where their person is in the process if they're hiring somebody in, in the employment process? Is there a way to do that? Is there a way for them to go in in real time and see their balance on their self-determination budget? These are things that are not necessarily written into the self-determination law when we're talking about self-determination or the regs for FMS in general for any of these services. But these are the kinds of best practices we would love to see. And that's what we're trying to invest in. So I just want to just make that plug in regards to paying attention to the language around the intent and summary of this project. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much. And again, as we go into the, you know, writing your proposals, just like anytime you propose anything, if you've worked with the regional centers before, we want to be specific to things um, that are outlined in what we're looking for in the request. So again, Specifically, these are some of the things that you should see written into your proposals, um, and these are the things that you should be prepared to talk about if you're chosen for an interview for this. Um, all right, so again, throughout this proposal, which again, I'm hoping folks have had an opportunity to review and take a look at, um, there is, we don't have to go through a bunch of questions, and you don't have to think of all of your questions right now either. We also have the email addresses that um, are ad indicated on here. So I just want to um, put this right here because you will have an opportunity. If you have questions, you're welcome to shoot an email out to these folks and they can collectively work together to make sure that we're being very consistent on how we give responses back to all of you that might have questions about the RFP. Because again, that's important for us as we're trying to get this all aligned in a very short period of time. Um, so just want to put that out there as well as that you have an, that opportunity. And I'll go over that one more time when we close out here um, shortly as well for this discussion. Um, so within here too is the financial management services provider uh, requirements. One of the questions, I guess the main question, Liz, was do we have to be a new provider or is that, or can I already be an existing provider? Um, if let's say someone was an existing provider in beautiful Redding, California, and was only doing FMS services for a small number of people that were served by Far Northern Regional Center. 
but they found it upon their heart that they really, really want to do all the things that you outlined in that previous paragraph. Um, and they want to do it for the central region, or they want to do it for Southern California. Um, we have an openness for folks that might want to look at an expansion as well, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so expanding beyond where your service area is, but also again, it's like the third time I'm going to say this, right? So if you're an existing provider, let's say you're serving the whole state, but you say, I could take, you know, this much of money and I could invest in software so that I, my, I will have a portal where people who are using our FMS services, they can go in and they're going to be able to see in real time, et cetera. Or we're going to be able to bring on this many more staff that speak these languages and they will be responsive uh, within 24 hours to individuals that we serve. So you, that, when we talk about expansion, it can be, it can be geographic, but it also, it also can be in the quality, in the, in the technology, in your manpower, any of those ways. So long way to say, absolutely, it is for everybody, uh, it, whether you are coming on new or an existing provider. Perfect. That, and thank you very much. That is, that is exactly the message we want out there is um, we want to be able to show that these funds are being used really, really well. And I think that uh, existing provider, that that's a distinct possibility. Um, the, with that, for those that don't do this currently, but have an interest in it, um, again, I, I, I will pre send my appreciation to San Andreas Regional Center um, for really doing a great job of outlining a lot of this information that uh, has the requirements and um, to the other 20 regional centers for everyone getting on the same page about this is what they wanted in their RFP. Because some of you know that you don't always get the same answer from different regional centers when it comes to what to submit for things. So um, so with that being said, um, I'm not going to go and read over every word. This is like a 20 page long RFP, but I just want to make sure folks are very clear that we want to ensure that if you're planning on doing this, that you comport with the uh, instruction, excuse me, with the um, requirements that are here. If for some reason you have a question about your requirements and whether or not you would qualify because it seems different than what you see up here, each of you, there, there's a email addresses that you can reach out to with specific questions about these things. We're not going to be able to go into everyone's different scenarios, like on a, a statewide call with a lot of folks, but just know that if you do have questions related to whether or not your specific company meets the FMS provider requirements, then we've got that ability for you to be able to reach out and connect with us. And I would just encourage you to do that like as soon as possible. Like if right now you, you end this thing saying, I'm just not sure about number 10 right here, um, that I, I'm going to be able to comply with all the vendor requirements that are outlined, then it, it shoot us over an email and let us know what your concerns are. Let us have an opportunity to talk with you before you decide that you maybe don't want to do this, um, because we'd like to have a discussion with you uh, about that. Maybe there is an opportunity where we can clarify some of the requirements. Um, all right, so very well outlined in there what the different requirements are. Um, Additionally, there are requirements that outline the HCBS setting requirements, and then it goes to the qualifications sought in the provider. Again, when we are talking about doing, whether it's reviewing your proposals, like the written proposals that come in, or whether we're talking about um, you sitting in for an interview, look at these areas right here. These are the qualifications. These are the things that we are interested when, when we are talking and reading about what you are planning on doing. It should be tied to the things that are on here. And so you can, again, read these different bullet points um, and just encourage you to get uh, that language into your proposal. Um, we're not writing the great American novel, folks. I uh, just want to make that very abundantly clear to a few people too. Like you, you know, we want to, uh, we were interested in you writing enough for us to ensure that you did all the things that Liz has told you three times now to do as far as specializing the services to meet our needs as outlined previously, and that you meet these qualifications that are outlined um, in here as well. Um, and again, you can see the eligibility information for those that are wanting to get service, be service providers as well. I love it. This is like a one-stop shop with all of our regulations that you need to be able to do this, which is good because not all folks that are going to apply for something like this may have previously been a regional center service provider. So, John, can I uh, jump in? I'm so please sorry. Please do, yes. 
you know, yeah. I know we have some questions popping up in the chat, and I don't know how you want to handle those, but I do want to po point out a question that came up that is a very valid question in regards to the surety bond. Um, there was, you know, this RFP was put Just out, and and yesterday, I think it was, the department issued a directive saying you don't need to have one if you're if you're a um, FMS yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what we, we will take that under consideration as we're doing these reviews. <laughs> okay, please know that. Yeah, and I will just say, if anyone's never been a FMS provider before, and you want to like dip your toe into doing this, that would be something I would really recommend that you either talk to an existing FMS provider that works in the state of California, and because your industry is very heavily regulated by the Department of Developmental Services, in essence, like these vendorizations are to explain that there are changes that are going on policy-wise, statewide, as it relates to the utilization of FMSs that in many ways are trying to make it, these businesses function, I think, more supportively for people with developmental disabilities, um, but also to ensure that we've got some consistency when it comes it's to vendoring, vendoring people as well. It's more knowledge. So, um, so with that, um, there, if you had any questions about the materials that um, are on the state's website, um, I, you know, I would recommend you do that research. Like if you're going to put in a proposal for this much, I would propose that you hop on to DDS's website and kind of search everything FMSs. And I would say almost more than anything else, ensuring that you at least are looking at all of the directives related to the self-determination program. Um, give you yourselves an idea if you're not doing this what you would be in for as far as changes that are going to that may possibly occur with your vendorization because of um uh updates and and modifications made by um the department so uh let's see here uh eligible applicants we have that information in there this has a breakdown of what to include um, with your proposal. So the title page, table of contents, description of your qualifications, um, mission values, et cetera. You'll see the different areas in here. If during the course of reviewing this, which I would just please encourage you to do as soon as possible. If you are interested in doing this, like review this in depth tomorrow at the latest, like, feel like you understand every word that is written on this. And if you don't, and you have questions about it, ask this week, please. Reach out via email to those RFP inboxes that are included. Give us an opportunity to be able to answer your questions. Perhaps there's additional information that may need to be put out to people. We don't, you know, but in the meantime, we just want to ensure that you're not trying to look at this right before it's due to get turned in and then find out that you've got some questions because we probably, we may or may not be able to turn around quick answers um, at that point. So just again, talking about getting this thing into us, um, if you could take a look and make sure that you really understand what we're asking of you this week as soon as possible and that you get your questions into us. Um, again, these are, this is kind of an, uh, uh, the, the attachments that we recommend that folks have as well. And those were attached to the original document too. Um, even outlines how we would like to receive the documents, uh, please. So um, just like your 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 term papers, your your uh, your graduate school work, some of you. Um, and you will submit it to us and then we will submit, yeah, we'll we'll select the candidates. So let's see. You already heard about the deadlines. Um, if folks have questions, do you guys know which email boxes to use? Yes. I saw all kinds of heads nod just now that uh, are here. Very good. And then um, as it relates to proposals and things like that, we don't need a million and one color pictures of whatever is kind of going on. So um, make the file sizes small um, so that it can make it past the regional center's um, mailbox filters. Uh, it should just be, for the most part, text that you are providing us. Um, if there's other things, providing us with hyperlinks might be a good idea so that we can just click on things that are um, available. Uh, let's see. And applications uh, submitted after the deadline or incomplete or proposals that do not meet the basic requirements will be disqualified. Uh, no proposals will be returned. All right. You guys, everyone's with me so far? 
333. Liz, uh, anything else or shall we jump into kind of the next steps? I'm all right. good with next steps. Thanks. John. So you guys know you have to write a proposal now. You all know that you need to understand what we're asking for in that proposal, hopefully in the next couple of days here, so that you can get questions to the regional centers and we can help answer those questions for you, right? And then you're gonna be writing that proposal. It's gonna get emailed in to these three different areas here, okay? And then we are going to be evaluating the proposals. We are going to see whether or not your proposal, whether or not your qualifications align with the RFP. If they do, then that is then we will be looking at who are those applicants, who are those um, folks that have submitted their um, applications, the applicants that best um, would qualify for a interview. And so that will be the kind of the next step that we will do. We're going to be taking a look at the applicants that have come in. We're going to take a look at what is being proposed, and we're going to have an opportunity as a statewide group to be able to do that. Um, it'll be interesting. You know, we've got 71 folks on now, Liz. So if we get like 100 proposals, then I think a bunch of my staff are not going to be able to take any vacation time uh, during that time period because they're going to be doing a lot of reading. Um, but that's okay. That's a good problem. We're interested in 100 proposals. If 100 people want to become FMS vendors with us, we want to figure out a way to make you all FMS vendors and get you as much money as we can to make it happen because we have the level of need and how it impacts all 21 regional centers can absolutely not be understated. So with that, we are going to have an opportunity as regional centers to get together to figure out how we're going to look at getting the awards done. And then we are going to be working on, at that point, doing our um, you know, our award letters and, and, and meeting with folks after we do that. Talking about how we use the, and so you can see some disclaimers here, um, our, our, our reservation of rights um, to accept um, all or part of a proposal or reject all or part of a proposal. Um, some of my staff that have worked with me for years know that sometimes the proposal that initially came in may not be exactly what ends up getting awarded. It may well be that a 95% of your proposal is amazing, but 5% isn't going to happen. Or that um, there are parts of your proposal that we'd love to see you expand on, possibly. So again, I think that's an opportunity for us uh, statewide to be able to have some discussions about that to ensure that we're best getting the utilization of the funding for the regional center clients, that, that it's going to really tie to more opportunities for our clients because we're going to have FMSs that are available and responsive and up to date on technology and ways to communicate. So um, as far as the allowable use of funds, again, that's in the attachment D as well. Startup funds, um, we are going to have them all expended by ooh, March of 2020, Dan Comer, 2026? Six, Six, yeah. Yep. Yeah, March of 2026. So March of 2026 will be when we're going to be expending all the funds by. Um, and uh, we would ask, you know, obviously that you keep all of your documents uh, for us to review how the startup funds were actually utilized. Um, and then we will be talking about the ongoing funding. Again, you will be, uh, you know, FMS providers have a DDS set rate. And so there's not necessarily like a negotiation of those rates um, that would be going on. Um, there is a schedule that has been attached to the RFP as well that outlines what the, um, the rates are. Before I move on any further, though, I just want to go back to this other section. Liz, is there anything else that you wanted to go over as far as budget, finance, information that they want to make sure that they include? No, you know, somebody put in the chat a question around, you know, the fact that attachment D is blank. Um, that's because you will create that budget. Yeah. Yep. You, again, think of all these words that Liz has said about being creative and utilizing, uh, you know, the technology, looking at staffing up, um, you know, hiring new staff. If you, you know, if something like this would allow you to bring on two new staff and that's going to be allow you to take on X number of new clients, then that would be uh, information to share with us in your proposal. Um, ongoing funding. Again, we talked about that. There's the um, DDS set rates for the vendorizations that you can see here as well. I want to scroll too fast. And then the rest of it is just the appendixes, the appendixes that are attached here. And um, 
you'll be entering your information in and that all gets sent in, as we said, to those three different inboxes. So with that, we want to, oh, 338, not too bad on time. So with that, we want to, we again, we've got uh, Mia here, who we again want to thank San Andreas Regional Center for their work in getting the RFP like language together, um, you know, initially. And Liz is on here as well. And so um, if there's any questions that folks have certainly got my staff on here too, that are going to be working at reviewing these, but we really just did this because we wanted to have an opportunity to make sure that everyone understood like the importance for our regional centers and having this service option with the, we, there's so many things we are unable to be able to provide to regional center clients if we do not have the FMS supports that are needed. And so it's just absolutely vital to us. Uh, but also then we also wanted to share that we're all working together on this too. And so all the regional centers want to, in essence, try to figure out how to turn that $6 million into the most amount of opportunities for the regional center clients throughout the state of California. And so um, I see a name, um, Aparna, can I have you unmute yourself? I have a question. So in looking through the RFP, you, a lot of the questions about capability relate to FMS um, co-employer and sole employer, not FMS bill pay, right? So that's that's a little tricky because some of those responsibilities are not part of FMS bill pay, right? And then the service code that's actually listed on page 12, the continuation from that paragraph on page 11, you refer to service code 490 and 491. Those are not FMS self-determination program service codes. So there's a lot of confusion because you keep referring back and forth to things. As someone who re read this many, many times to prepare for this, how do we navigate that? And then even with participant directed services, and then there's social rec, are those to be separate or are they, are you looking at participant directed service um, services and then FMS for participant directed social rec services as one or different? So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and first say apologies for the confusion in regards to the service codes. We are very ambitious, and as John said, there are a lot of chefs that put this together. So thank you for your patience in that and, and for pointing that out. Um, what we are what we're trying to do is say we want FMSs for everything there could possibly be an FMS for. <laughs> okay. So when we look at that, and, and you're right, it should have had the, the correct service code for self-determination, but we're also looking for that other one as well, right? Because in traditional services, that's the service code, the 491. So, so what we're looking for is, is, again, the entire umbrella, if possible. That doesn't mean that if you specifically, and I know the question came up, but if, what if I just want to do this one? That's fine. Then you just propose just what you want to do. But we are casting a really wide net here. To speak to what your question is in regards to participant directed, you're absolutely right. Social rec is under the umbrella of participant directed. And so that is absolutely correct. It is. We are emphasizing social rec because that is a, that is a, right out in front need that our communities have right now. So within participant directed, we want to have someone who's going to be really good at dealing with those social rec providers, because that is unique if you've been dealing with them. They don't understand how we work. They don't understand why we want to pay for things the way we do. So we're looking for someone who can navigate that if that's what your interest area is. I have one more question. Um, with respect to all of these requirements, when you read the questions, they want to know processes. When we're applying, we might have experience on certain things, but we don't have experience and information on the processes. So for example, I I have a lot of experience working as a fiduciary and providing services. However, mm -hmm. understanding your process on the FMS social rep, if I've never done it, and mm -hmm. you guys don't give me information, mm -hmm. I'm really in a black box on how to answer those questions robustly, right? So it's like, how are you expecting mm -hmm. me to answer a question when you haven't told me what your process is? Exactly. Right. It's not that I can't do the job. I'm doing it. But the way you guys do it is very particular. So is there any information on what your processes actually are and where the complications are? Right. So we, we understand how to answer that question. Does that make sense? It does. It does make sense. And we have to be very careful not to get too specific, because, again, what we're, we're we have an issue around social rec across the state. But I can tell you it's different in L.A. than it is in, in Sacramento for John. 
or for Enrique out in Bakersfield, right? right? So I go, we go back to what do the regs say, right? Or, or what do the directives say? What does the statute say when we talk about um, an FMS for participant directed services? So social rec, when we talk about dealing with social rec, um, what we're what we're talking about is again, you know, how 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 will you set up a system? And, I'm, and like I said at the start, that is that's going to be accessible and responsive for the folks that we serve. That is the main thing. And when we're talking about people needing social rec services, we know that people want them quickly. Um, thing classes fill up, uh, et cetera. So I think you know just. I don't feel like a black box, like you're in a black box if you go ahead and like John said, do your homework, right? Read the regs, take a look at the DDS website. If you're looking at certain regions, I don't know what region you're in, but take a look at those regional centers websites. You can start to get a sense of what is needed. And again, as John said, don't hesitate to reach out to us at whichever you know region you need to reach out to for further questions. We want you to succeed. <laughs> like John said, we want this to happen. We were, we are on a very tight time frame. And so we appreciate your understanding on that. So uh, Godwin's hand go up. Hey, John, um, thank you for your presentation. All good minus the USC poster. Um, I saw you mentioned something about um, large know, budget. <laughs> go Bears. Um, <laughs> Uh, you mentioned something about large budget clients getting rejected um, or not having a lot of options. So um, speaking with current FMS providers, have you gotten feedback on the reason why they are um, uh, specifically not taking on these the, the challenge of larger budgets? Mia? I'm sorry. Was that a question for me? Or are you just pulling me in, yeah, John? Yeah, why not? I was like, why not? Yeah. Mia, because yeah. uh, you were certainly one of the ones that brought it up before. So the large budgets and, and the challenges that yeah. uh, FMSs are facing or we're facing. I, I think that they're having um, a challenge pushing that money out. Um, they're having a challenge collecting all of the, the receipts and kind of managing it. I think when, when SDP started, um, the budgets weren't super big, but now we're kind of seeing budgets that are a little bit bigger. And so it takes more manpower um, to ensure, because as the FMS agency, you're the one that's looking at the receipts. You're the, you know, one that is, is verifying when you pay the money out. Um, I hope my internet is not spotty. I am not in my office. I'm at a, another uh, meeting sounds, it sounds I perfect. out to do this. So, okay, good. So, so that's really been one of the challenges with self-determination and that's what's been causing a, you know, wait list for FMS agencies to be able to take on new folks, um, which has really challenged us. Um, so, you know, uh, we're hoping to, that by broadening the, the provider pool or even utilizing providers who are, are ready to man up and expand their services, to be able to, you know, better serve our individuals, whether that be through staffing that, um, you know, uh, to process things quicker, or like Liz had stated earlier, um, culturally responsive, different languages. You know, we have families um, that, you know, need services in, in every language. So um, that's kind of where we're at with um, the bigger budgets. They just take more manpower. I hope that answered your question, Godwin. Yeah, it, it does. I guess I'm wondering, um, because our, we've primarily operated in a long-term care space, and I, I'm wondering if the large budgets are associated with like residents in large in, in, in um, large long-term care settings or, or, or places yeah, like yeah. that, and trying to figure out how to just obtain those much quicker, or what the cost, I guess, like, if you're yeah. seeing specific areas that the expenses are going to. Yeah, I wouldn't say that they're going to, I, I mean, for self-determination, I, I, I can only speak for San Andreas's catchment area, but I don't really think that we have a lot of people that are in a residential setting. Most of these individuals live in either supported living or independent living or maybe with their families, but they may have several different layers to their support system. Um, and then depending on what their needs are, right, this is person centered. And so therefore, you know, the, the needs can, I mean, somebody can have, gosh, I think the first budget I wrote the person maybe had five services. And then lately I've seen budgets where people have 15 services. So just to kind of give you an example of where it started to where it's, it's, you know, grown to, um, 
it's it's just kind of taken a life of its own. So self determination well, definitely yeah. challenged the. Yeah, the I, 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 I'm just going to jump in because our experience is a little different. Me, I mean, we've always had, and maybe it's because we were a pilot. I mean, we've always had really large budgets and and folks with a high degree of need. So yeah, it can be. I, I just want to emphasize it. It varies from regional center to regional center. Um, but, but when we're talking about management of 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 large budgets, we're talking about management of a lot of services. We're talking about management of a lot of dollars. Um, and like what Mia said, it's just needing the manpower to do it. Thank you. It looks like Christine has her hand up. Hi, yeah, I was just going to kind of add on to what you said, Mia. I think one of the other things that the FMSs have to consider with those large budgets is um, the, the time that it takes to receive the funding. And often in our scenario, it's similar to what you were saying in our area, people are hiring employees directly. And so you have labor laws to follow as an FMS where you have to pay those employees. And there's a timing thing as to when you get your funding then from the various regional centers. And so the bigger the budget, the more you have to consider um, being able to front those, front those funds. And I know that's something that's been considered. Liz mentioned the pilot and the pilot, the funding flowed differently <laughs> than it does currently in the... Uh, in the self-determination program, but Godwin, that's that's a big consideration for FMSs. Thank you. Bridget? Hello, um, my name is Bridget Morton. Um, as I stated, um, I'm a foster parent for high needs children and adults. I'm in the process of self-determination with my adult and my minor. I was forced to do homeschool with my minor um, because the child, my child was being physically abused at the school. And when you guys came up with this, um, cause I'm in the process of self, self, uh, um, social rec to, um, to be vendored. And then when this came about, and now this is the opportunity where I'll be able to still be able to homeschool my child. And then um, also, you know, this right here, right here, just open my eyes. Like, okay, this right here is something I can do and be able to still, you know, help my child, um, you know, at homeschooling and um, all yeah. that beautiful things. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I wanted to know, because I went, that self-determination is a headache. Um, it's like my head is hurting right now thinking about it. So this right here um, um, will be so, so Bridget, finalized. This, this meeting is actually um, for, we're looking to, to try to get more FMS providers to make the self-determination program and other programs like participant directed services, social rec, make things go a little smoother. So um I think that if you have questions about self-determination or if you have questions about the social rec vendorization process, I truly encourage you to go back through your service coordinator. They should be able to help and guide you through that. Um, and hopefully today, as we're all here, we'll be able to uh, recruit some new potential FMS vendors to make this process be a little smoother for people like yourself. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and and just there's a couple things in the chat a question around is this for pediatrics this is for all ages um, these services and then there's a very specific question I'm not gonna get into the weeds on it but it's basically how is it how would the regional center pay the administrative fee for social rec if there was a down payment there's an example given would we receive one month administration fee or four that is a very specific question that I would suggest. You reach out, you, you email that question. Um, that's more the business of doing the FMS. It's part of, not necessarily part of the proposal, but I can understand why you want to have an answer to that, right? Because why do I want to, would I want to go for this money if this is going to be too much work? So, but I think it's best that that question be emailed so that we might want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation around that, whichever one of the regional centers it is that you're dealing with. Yeah, um, you do. I will say, um, our, our regional center is actually having a meeting about that question, I think, in the next oh, day fabulous. or so. Um, well, there you go. So, go to John's meeting. <laughs> yeah. If you want to send it to rfp at alterregional.org, um, we should be able, unless you're already one of our vendors, and that's why we have that question. But that was that is one we're looking at, too. Um, other questions that folks... I, so, um, again, uh, just not knowing the landscape always of everyone that is part of you know a large publicly advertised meeting... The Department of Developmental Services is the website that you are going to want to go to to take a look at their materials on the FMSs. So look at the financial management services information on the Department of Developmental Services website. Additionally, you're going to want to look at things like participant-directed services, 
things like the self-determination program. All of these things are things that you should be reviewing. But again, we may have some existing FMS providers on here, which I will just say, if I was looking at doing this new and entering into this, someone that is currently providing it right now may also be able to give you some insights into a kind of what works and what does not work um, as it relates to that. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. I'm going to jump in the chat and see what else we have. And see money for allowing for cash outlay while waiting for reimbursement. I think that's a, certainly a use that someone might be interested in using it for, right? Like that was, you know, that was... We know that, that the startup funds have gone towards FMSs like that in the past to get them, you know, to have enough in the account to get things going for clients. And so that might be a part of your budget proposal, you know, that $500,000 worth or $50,000 or $100,000 worth of it, you know, is used to ensure that, you know, they can, um, you know, put that cash out there to get, get the budget started um, while waiting for the reimbursements from the regional center. Mark, I see your hand up. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Uh, no question, just a comment. I think I've been to 50 bidders conferences in my career. This is the best bidders conference ever and what a bidders conference should be for an RFP. Pretty impressive. All 21 came together to put together such a well-written RFP in 20 pages. But even better to run a bidders conference like this. So thank you. Incredibly insightful. Did you say this video will get posted? Yeah, it's going to go on our YouTube. It'll go on Alta's YouTube page. And then Perfect. we'll share the link with all the other regional centers. So if folks want to take a look at it, we can do that. They'll have it uploaded by tomorrow, usually, the, the videos that we save to this account. Um, and thank you. We've been planning this bidders conference for, for months and months and months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so let's see, anything else, Liz, that we want to touch on? I know, uh, sorry again, I know Dan and Christy, you guys worked a lot on this a bunch. Is there anything that I missed, guys? No, not on my end. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay, sounds good. And then Liz, I just want to check in with you and Mia to see, and even Mary Lou can weigh in to see if she's got any feedback. No, oh, thank you. Thank you all for coming. It's so exciting to see so many people interested in this. It's, it's fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely echo the same. We're really hoping uh, to hear from you all. We're looking forward to receiving your proposals. Um, this has been a need of our regional centers um, for quite some time now. So we're very excited about this. Um, we apologize with the tight turnaround. Um, we know it's tight. Uh, we're all going to be working around the clock reviewing your proposals to really make sure that we give you all um, our, our, you know, your fair attention to each uh, proposal. So get them into us and don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. All right. Well, well with that, we're going to close the meeting. I'm going to double check the chat one more time. A positive message in the chat from Cherish Care saying that they are interested and they're going to reach out to Liz. So that's about as good a way to end it as possible. All right. We look forward to reading all of your proposals and working with you in the future, folks. Thank you. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Mia.